Are you an engineer who has submitted hundreds of job applications with no outcomes or success and wondering how you can land an interview with much higher success when doing an engineering job search? Then you don't want to miss this video interview with Pat Batchelor, career strategist and engineer recruiter from Recruit on Purpose. Pat is a professional engineer turned engineer recruiter who is passionate about helping engineers land their dream opportunity. And in doing so, he's helped hundreds of engineers use personal branding and their LinkedIn profile for career growth. Pat is also the creator of the DIY engineering job search course to help those engineers who want to take a hands-on approach into their career and land the right opportunity. In this video, Pat shares lots of values such as how to connect with the right people that will get you ahead in your career, how to perform an effective job search, how to optimize your LinkedIn profile for job searching, and how to use personal branding as a catalyst for career growth. I had a great time talking to Pat. I'm confident that you'll find lots of value on what he's got to say. So without further ado, here is Pat Batchelor. Pat Batchelor, thank you for joining the New Traxxas Club. I'm honored that you're here today to talk about, about uh, job searching, interview prep, all the good stuff that helps our careers as engineers. But before we dive into, how about you give us a quick intro about your career perspective uh, uh, in general and what you're doing these days? Sure, sure, absolutely. So I am uh, an engineer. I, I grew up in the in the uh, 60s and 70s. So just put the age range on there. Uh, graduated from Texas A&M with a degree in civil engineering and shortly thereafter moved to Atlanta in the mid 80s and uh, joined a consulting firm and spent a good bit of my career in the design side, primarily municipal water and wastewater here in the, in the Georgia area, the Georgia market, worked for a number of different consulting firms. And then um, was leading a small team of about five or six engineers. And my boss called me in one day and said, Pat, you know, why are you, uh, he said, uh, he said, you know, Pat, you're, you're a pretty good engineer, but no matter how hard you try, you're just going to be a good engineer. And I was like, really? And so he said, but as far as business development, you're one of the best I know. And I was like, well, he goes, no, you know how to find the room, work the room, uh, create a unique sales proposition, develop a team and win work. And we need more work. So would you go find more work? I was like, sure. You know, so that was my transition from being a design engineer and then he said, oh, by the way, be 50 percent billable, you know, for <laughs> and for those consulting, they laugh and say, oh, OK, that means you cover your costs with work and then you go find additional work. And so that was my foray in uh, probably 2004 or five into business development and really business development when you're a small consulting firm is is code for unemployed professional unemployed engineer you're going out trying to develop new relationships with people you've never met and sell your services as a company to them and their company and uh so did that for a number of years and it was just amazing to me because you're like well and he says you know we got this database of cl uh, clients that we've worked with over the years and you look at it and you know they, they you call the number they've never heard of your firm and and then all of a sudden you're like, I've got to be, I've got to go find some work. And, uh, and so I started going, well, how do you find the plant manager at a particular manufacturing facility? You know, they don't advertise themselves anywhere. You know, uh, if you, you know, orange juice manufacturer, oh, you want to sell orange juice. How do you get a hold of, you know, yeah, I so, know. uh, started using LinkedIn during that time. And, uh, and started doing business development using LinkedIn and connecting with people. And then, of course, the economy takes a tumble, right? And uh, I don't know how it was, Wilson. I don't even know if you were even in school in 2005 to 7 to 10. Yeah, I was. <laughs> not, uh, not college, uh, high school. I was in high school. High school, right. So, yeah. you know, it's, it, you know, you can tell you got an old timer on the phone here, but... <laughs> Uh, on the call here. But for me, it was like half of the engineers in the Atlanta area over a two-year period got cut loose. And uh, 
And so a friend of mine called me up and, uh, you know, I'm doing business development, trying to make relationships and you're turning over rocks, you're calling people, you're going to every meeting you can figure out to, to make connections, to find work for, for 50 unemployed engineers, you know, 50 people in my company. And I get a phone call from a friend and she says, Hey, Pat says, would you be willing to come to an engineer's round table? And I was like, uh, and I said, well, and she said, you know, are you going to the ASCE meeting? I was like, yeah, I usually go. And she said, well, would you come an hour early for the engineer's round table? And I was like, what is that? I've never heard of it. She goes, it's code for unemployed. And I went, oh, okay. You know, so Wilson, I go to this meeting and the first time they met, there was like seven or eight people. And I was kind of like, okay, you kind of kind of go, okay, well, I understand maybe why these guys might've gotten cut loose. The next month, Wilson was like 15 and they said, well, you seem to act like you know how to find people and make conversations. Would you come teach a class next month and show us how to do this? And I don't know, Wilson, if they advertised it or what, but so, you know, sometimes angels strut right in where, you know, Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. I go into this meeting and there's 33 unemployed engineers. And there's this low level tension of, I've got to find a job. And uh, so I stand up and say, here's the things you need to do. And quite frankly, it was the same exact techniques that I'm teaching today, which is you've got to have conversations with the right people about opportunities and so it's not so much of what you know it's who you know and then who you know is well who do you want to know well you want to know the people who are making decisions on whether there's projects available or if they can hire you or if they want you to come in and interview and those are the engineers and the hiring managers at those other companies and so you know, I stood up in front of 33 engineers, people past retirement, entry level engineers and, you know, mid-level managers telling them how to find a job. And, and I think I gave them good advice. As I walked out of that meeting, I was like, Lord, what am, I've got a job. What am I in here for? It was like, oh, maybe this is what I'm supposed to be doing, helping engineers take the next step in their career. So Shortly after that, I switched over into recruiting. And then after that, for 10 years, uh, worked as a, a recruiter. And uh, it's been a great run. I've really enjoyed doing it. So that's kind of how I got to here. Um, COVID happened and all my clients said, stop work. <laughs> I was like, what? So Wilson, what I decided to do is create, during when COVID hit and shutdown happened, Nobody's calling me as a as a recruiter because they're like, we don't know what we're doing. You know, I was just sitting there looking around going, you know, twiddling my thumbs going, nobody's re recruiting, nobody's hiring. And uh, so I created an online coaching course, teaching engineers how to take, find, oftentimes just find the first job out of college. But you also find that there's time to time, you know, nobody teaches us in engineering school how to find a job or how to navigate your career, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of by happenstance and you kind of hope and pray the right opportunities are gonna come along. <laughs> so I do a little bit of that coaching, just trying to help draw people out and say, what is it you love doing? Who's in the area that's doing that? How do you connect with them and reach out in a meaningful way to let them know you're looking for an opportunity? And so. I created that course in 2020 and it's getting off the ground and we're having some success with it. So I'm, I love doing, I love helping engineers find their way and taking the next step. And, uh, and while I'm doing my regular recruiting business, I'm helping companies find talented people. So it's, it's a win-win. I love doing it. So it's an opportunity to kind of serve the clients, the companies out there, and also the clients, you know, the candidates, the candidates. So, yeah, I love that. I, 
I can I can really tell I can breathe that you're really passionate <laughs> about this and helping people connect and companies yeah. find talent and talent fight companies. Right. Uh, and you share a lot of a lot of great wisdom. I I think you mentioned a good point that even back in the day the the, the techniques the tricks that you used back in the day they still work today and it's about you know talking to the right people. And uh, on that, I, I think I made all the mistakes in the book uh, regarding job search and uh, finding opportunities and how to get my resume uh, seen in a pool of, of applicants. I think to this yeah. day, a lot of us engineers still believe that the most effective way to apply or get a, to apply to our job is through just submitting an application on LinkedIn because LinkedIn is known to be, hey, this is an amazing platform to connect, to find opportunities, uh, update your career uh, status and whatnot. And uh, a lot of engineers still reliably um, uh, still rely on LinkedIn for for to job search and they call it that to be effective. So sure. uh, I'm curious though, based on your experience working with uh, engineers, working with companies, what do you know to be some of the mistakes that engineers make when it comes to, to job search? Well, I would say the, the the first one is underestimating the power of a good LinkedIn profile. What I tell people is, is that if you're doing, if you're an engineer and us engineers, civil, structural, it doesn't matter. You can go across the board. The most valuable digital real estate you'll ever have is your LinkedIn profile. You know, back in the day, they'd say, oh, you hang a shingle. You know, uh, if you are a tradesman, you put a shingle out in front of your your sign that has a, a boot on there. Oh, that guy makes boots, you know, and people th come through town and they get their shoes made. Well, how is anybody going to find you as a civil engineer these days? If Let's say you graduate as a structural engineer from the University of California, uh, Irvine and you get a degree and and you are brand new to the field you don't know anybody in the marketplace how is somebody supposed to find you how is somebody you know i just say give us recruiters at least a fighting chance of finding you <laughs> you know there's this story about the guy who says dear lord help me win the lottery you know and the lord says okay at least meet me halfway, buy a ticket, you know? <laughs> and uh, well, in the same way, I say, if you're looking for a job, how are you going to find a job? Well, I'm going to have a resume and I'm going to apply on Indeed or LinkedIn or Monster or Dice and hope somebody sees my resume. And I can just tell you almost 100% of the time, if someone happens to see your resume and that'll likely be a recruiter, they might look at it and they're going to go, the first thing they're going to do is go, let me go look at their LinkedIn profile and see if they're any good. And, and any good can mean a lot of different things. It can be, how do they, you know, what, what, you know, what kind of picture they have. And I, I say even behind that, that, that banner should be a sales banner. You're putting it out there for people to look at it and you want them to look at it and say, oh he's doing what we're doing i think i'll pick up the phone and call him so the linkedin profile for us engineers is one of the most important things that we can do to advance our career at least just to be seen and be seen in a positive light you can have a linkedin profile if it's dull and boring you might think well it's not that good it's not that important i'm going how do you know it's not that important? And then I would all ask the second question. I say, why do you think somebody's looking at your LinkedIn profile? Well, why would they be looking at mine? Well, maybe they're doing a search for structural engineer, someone who's just graduated from the University of California, Irvine, for an entry level job, and they're going to pay you $100,000. And they see your profile and they go, well, it's got structural engineer and got a crappy photo. And, you know, there, there's not much of it. There's no resume. How do I get a hold of this guy? And, you know, you don't even make it easy for people to contact you. You just go, really? So I just encourage people not just to have a good LinkedIn profile, have a great LinkedIn profile. If you spend 
two hours or four hours creating a resume and four years of getting a degree and you're not going to be willing to spend five or ten hours having a great LinkedIn profile I would say you're not a very wise engineer when it comes <laughs> to the ways of you know because people are going to look at it even if they looked at it just because they're going to meet you at a conference you know even if they're looking at it, they just want to see a picture there a nice picture updated picture of who you are in a positive light so they can go ah, i like a smile i like the way he carries himself i i think that's someone i want to talk to so even just a personal profile i say make it uh professional uh, make it friendly and approachable. Someone that you might just look at through their photo go, I think he's a nice person. Why would you think that from a photo? Well, because he's smiling. You know, I can't tell you how many pictures on LinkedIn I see the guy's frowning is like, I'm mad. I'm mad at the world. And I've got my photo and it's a mug shot. <laughs> and you're like, I'm not calling him. He's better looking for a job. You know, and, and that, but that's how they 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 portray themselves to the yeah. world. Is this little little tiny photo, professional photo, and you're just like, might want to try a little harder, get a little yeah. bit, and then, you know, and it's nothing else than just getting your iPhone or your 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 cell phone. Get a friend. Go around your house. Go outside because oftentimes lighting outside is better. You know, yeah. they have the golden hour in the morning or the afternoon when the sun's not too bright. And take a hundred pictures. And surely out of a hundred, you're going to get a decent Statistically, picture. Yeah. <laughs> that looks somewhat attractive. And, you know, and, and whether it's attractive or not, you know, that's, those are the subtle things. And, you know, we... You know, I have to say, if you're going to take a girl out on a date or if you're going on a date, you want to, you're going to at least dress up. You might put a, you know, a nice shirt on. You're going to take a shower. Well, LinkedIn gives you plenty of time the rest of your career to just take a good selfie, to add information that makes people when they see there go, oh, that might be the guy I need to talk to. And if you make it easy by putting your phone number or your email address, at least that, then they can reach out to you and you can engage in a conversation. What I tell engineers is people are making decisions about your career, whether they call you about a job opportunity or not, based solely on your LinkedIn profile. Now let that think sink in for a while. Yeah. Really? I, I, what else are they going to use? You're telling the world, I'm just a has been, or I'm just a, you know, I'm just a lowly engineer. Nobody's ever heard of me. No, I don't even want people to know. You know, Wilson, I got a phone call a couple of years ago. It just broke my heart. This young, I'm a recruiter and I'm out there and people call me and say, can you help me sometimes? And I'm like, let me see if I can help you. This young lady calls me. She goes, hi, uh, can you help me find a job in Southern California? And I go, okay, who are you? Well, I said, she goes, I, I, it's just so discouraging. I go, well, okay. And she goes, why do you want to go to Southern California? She goes, my boyfriend's there. I said, where do you live? She goes, I'm in Canada. And I go, okay, well, what do you do? Well, it's just so depressing. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, Tell me a little bit about yours. I just can't. And then she hangs up. <laughs> Wilson, I just felt so sorry. I was just like, you know, you could hear the desperation in her voice. She wanted to have a job opportunity. Now, going from Canada to the United States is not that hard to do. And if she was an engineer, maybe there would be an opportunity. But you could just tell she was so discouraged. That she wasn't even willing to give me her name, you know, and... Uh, and I just say, get out of your own way. If you're an engineer, stake your ground. Tell people who you are. Yeah. Tell people what you do. Tell people, uh, you know, what kind of degree you got in. If you earned a PE behind your name, for heaven's sakes, put it in your title. Pat yeah. Bachelor, PE. <laughs> you know, 
have I practiced in a while? Have I signed and sealed drawings? No. And I think, you know, sometimes I think the collective engineering world goes, <laughs> but I wouldn't, I wouldn't practice outside my area of expertise, but you know, as my boss said, you're a pretty good engineer, but you know, but, yeah. um, so I just say, have, if there's one thing I could encourage any engineer is go back and update at least every six months or a year, add something to your LinkedIn profile that's new, relevant, current, interesting, a new job, a new project, you know, post something on there every once in a while, because you have to figure out why would somebody looking at my profile? And that's the other part of it. It's kind of a psychological thing. It's about me, but it's not for me. It's for the people who are looking at me and answering the question, why are they looking at me and what would they be interested in? Oh, they want to hear about my services. Okay. Well, Show some pictures that mention water, wastewater, or structural engineering, and put that up there so that it's relevant to the people who may be looking at your LinkedIn profile. Because, you know, I think I spent five years, I just had a picture of the Grand Canyon. Why? Because I love going to the Grand Canyon. I think it's beautiful. <laughs> it's an yeah. amazing place. It takes your breath away. Yeah. What does it have to do with engineering? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> but I thought it was cool. So I put it on there because it was relevant to me. But, you know, I'm not trying to sell anything to myself. And are you trying to sell? We're always trying to sell ourselves. Or at least if you're, if you understand, look, it, no matter where you are in life, you've got to sell yourself. Yeah. Uh, through your work ethic, just showing up every day, being relevant, solving problems for your clients or your boss. We all need to be letting p others know that we are uh, relevant and interesting and someone that is great to have on a team. How do you convey all that on LinkedIn that you can even, you can do that. And I just say, you know, you can be as clever and as creative as you want to be. I noticed on your LinkedIn profile, you have a nice banner and you talked about the neutral axis on there. I was like, what is that? You know? <laughs> oh, this is an engineer who's got it figured out. Oh, he's going to have a website, you know, and he's got a yeah. podcast. Okay. So he's, you know, engineer with personality. That's you. Uh, um, <laughs> learning is that it's a, it's a work in progress and you're mentioning uh, a lot of great stuff and I don't want to, I don't want uh, to forget some of the things I want to go back into. Yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, so it's all about, the, I think the theme here is having a personal brand, putting out there, putting ourselves out there, telling people what we do, what we're all about, because that's how they're going to find and connect with us and future opportunities may come from, from there. Yes. Um, yes, absolutely. Personal branding. It, you have to be intentional about it, right? You yeah. know, it's not, nobody else is going to go on your LinkedIn profile and create your profile. No. Um, so you want to do a good job of it because, I, you know, being a professional engineer means that you, you know, just even the word, what does professional mean? What do you think of when you think of the word professional? I tend to think of a professional athlete, somebody who's getting paid to do something. Yeah. And, uh, and so what makes them special? Well, they are working hard at their craft. They show up and they and they try to do the best job that they can do and um, well that's kind of engineers we show up and we try to do the best we can at designing a building or a structure or a yeah. treatment plant well you want to let people know i'm pretty good at doing this well, even if it's just drafting so we want to be sure that we that we let the the world know hey there's an engineer in Irvine and Atlanta that gets it. And I need to give in, we'd love to have him on our team. And, yeah. uh, and so the reason why I say LinkedIn is so important is because you never know the opportunity costs, how often people are looking at your LinkedIn profile. There's a little button over there. You can click on it and you say, Oh, there's been 27 people who looked at my profile over the last 90 days. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Then you'd say, why were they looking at my profile? 
Well, what's the answer to that? Well, they might have an opportunity or a job or both. And, um, you know, they decided to call you or not call you based on your LinkedIn profile. So they're making decisions about your career while you're not in the room. You don't know about it. And what are you going to do about it? Well, you want to give yourself the best chance for the best opportunity. Even if you're in a world-class company, you know, things happen, you know, and you might lose your job through no fault of your own. And, and that's one of the cases we had with one of our engineers that was in my class was COVID hit. He got cut loose. He was a material scientist or a material engineer. He got cut loose because uh, the, the company he was working for was a consulting firm and they were working in at the time in power plants. And the power plants said, hey, we don't want to have outside contractors here right now get off site they cut him loose and he was out of a job for a month when he came and joined our class and he said pat i've sent out over 400 wow <laughs> uh resumes uh he goes i can't tell you how many cover letters i've written i can't tell you how many times i connect with people on linkedin or indeed he goes you know how many phone calls i've gotten i said how many he goes zero and i said really i said well why don't you take a look at the course, sign up. It costs you a little bit, but what it's going to do is give you the skills that you need to do. So he's like, okay. So he showed up and I was like, your LinkedIn profile needs some work. And he was like, okay. He changed his background, showed some photos that were very relevant to him as a material scientist. And oh my gosh, he calls me back the next week and said, Pat, guess what? And I was like, what? He goes, I've got an interview. And then the next week he's like, I said, well, how's it going now? He's like, I had four interviews. And I said, really? I said, how'd you do that? And he said, I just decided instead of me just blindly hitting apply, 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 he said, I just thought, well, what companies are in the, and he was in Boston. He ended up talking and talking to a guy in Chicago, one in New York and two in Boston. And he said, I got two offers and the offer I got from one company, they, they didn't even know that they had a role open. But once we started talking, they went, oh my gosh, we need you. And they made him an offer. He got to stay in Boston. He got, so he got two offers inside a month and you just go, Psh, you know, wow. and he was just thrilled. <laughs> yeah, he was thrilled and yeah. all because he just did really a couple simple things fix your yeah. linkedin profile and make it relatively attractive as you can then decide who's out there that hires people like me and how do i reach out and connect with them um, yeah and I, i'm pretty sure you teach all of that in in the in your courses you have uh, do. diy diy engineer and job search uh where you have courses to to help engineers uh to you know polish their their linkedin profile and get their a game when it comes to uh job search but i'm curious though you mentioned a lot about you know getting out there getting noticed uh in in, in your linkedin profile putting all your relevant information for recruiters to find yeah. uh, uh find those engineers so what when what when it comes to you know being out there and and you know, trying to get noticed. What What do you think is the most effective thing to do on our LinkedIn profile? Is it, uh, you know, getting the right keywords, putting hashtags or that kind of uh, stuff? Is that sufficient? Just up adding your background and your experience on your LinkedIn profile. Is that sufficient to get found by recruiters? I, it usually is. And, w and, and probably the most important thing is your job title. Okay. Um, if you're a, if you just graduated from let's say Georgia Tech, and you you want to be a civil engineer, but you don't you don't you've never worked as a civil engineer, and currently you're working as a pharmacy technician at Kroger. You know you don't want to use pharmacy technician at Kroger. It's the truth. And there's nothing to be ashamed of, but that's not the job you want to have. Yeah. So you would just say entry level graduate engineer or civil engineer. You want to put the word civil engineer. And then you just say uh, looking for work underneath it. The company you're working for looking for work. You know, there's nothing wrong with putting it out there. Hey, I'm I'm looking for a job. Um, 
but that gives people an idea to know. Of course, on LinkedIn, you can check a little box. It yeah. puts a little window around it and says, you know, open for work. Yeah. Um, I found that most people, when they put that on there, have either found a job or, you know, but it just makes it easier for people, A, to find them. And then, you know, recruiters are people too. They're like, I don't want to bother people, but he says he's open. So I'll give him a call, you know? Yeah. Uh, it gets a barrier uh, out of the way because you're already being up front saying, hey, I'm looking for an opportunity. I'm looking for a job. And then he puts I'm at least recruiters. open for a conversation. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, so that, that's a great tip. Those are really smart things. And there's just small little tricks, but they add up. Uh, I tell you, one time I was doing a search and and it was for that structural engineer in Irvine. I found the perfect candidate and I couldn't get a hold of him. And it was like, I wanted to take a brick and throw it through the computer and hit him in the head. It's like, hey, you tell me you're open for work. You've got your profile there. I love your background. I'd love to reach out and call you, but there's no way. And, you know, you send them a connection request and they don't respond and you just go. You know, what else do you do? You try to do as much research as you can, and I couldn't find it. So, and I'm, uh, you know, I'm not the best. Re Sometimes I'm not the best researcher out there, and other people might go, "Well, I could have found him." Well, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. why make it hard? If you're looking for work, at least put a link, a link there in your about section to engineers, recruiters, and hiring managers. If you want to connect, here's my my phone email, number and email phone number. Some people, yeah. some people, I get it. If you don't want to put your phone number there, you can put at least your email. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's the more direct way. Make it easy as possible for somebody to connect with you. Absolutely. Yeah. And now, so when you talked about getting the, your resume seen by the right people, the hiring manager, the recruiter, how do you find who are the key people to talk to when it comes to a job post? Because mo most of the times you find something on Indeed.com or zip recruiter or glass story all these sites that publish uh you know job opportunities and yes. you know you don't really have information not even by the person that published that that post that 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 job uh post how sure. do you find this information for people to go ahead and say hey i apply you perhaps you still need to apply to the job and then just yeah send a separate oh. note or an email or a call to Absolutely. let them know like, how, how do you find those key people to talk to? Well, that's a great course. And we could take an hour to talk about it because that's <laughs> section two. But in, in, in very short is do a little research. Let's say, um, let's pick a company. Now, you're in structural engineering, so there's a good firm out there. Let's call it Thornton Tomasetti. Very well-known engineering firm. Classic, tall building they may have a job posted, let's say for their San Francisco office and you go, that's my dream job. Well, what are you going to do? Okay. You hit apply and you apply, let's say on their company website, or maybe they've even advertised it on ND. It's going to go somewhere out there. You have no idea who's going to see it. Well, you got opportunity just to follow up and you applied for the job. You, you took enough nerves and you said, I'm that's my dream job. And you hit apply. Okay, you're going to sit around and wait for them to call you? Let me know how that works out for you. <laughs> they may call you. If you're a perfect fit, they might. But on the other hand, it might be just one more click. And that's the thing that's discouraging is, is I'm on the other end. I, I advertise on NT. I advertise for years. And I'll post a job and I'll, I'll say, you know, here's the position. I'll get hundreds and thousands of people applying for jobs. And a lot of times I never even see the resume. You would not imagine how hard it is to actually see a resume on Indeed. They just keep making it harder and harder. And you're just like, what? Yeah, it's not easy. And I'm paying for it. It's just crazy. <laughs> it's like, I'm paying for you to apply. And they give me a name, a title, and a company. And you go, okay, what do you have to do? Well, you have to hit this button, then you gotta hit that button, and then you download it, and then you look at it. They don't give you an email to reach back, and you're like, okay, well, this guy looks pretty good. How am I get a hold of him? Well, you gotta <laughs> send a note, and they've gotta reply, and it's just so much sand in the gears. It's like, as a user, as one who's paying for the platform, you do think they would wanna make it easier, but 
and they just keep making it harder and harder. So I tell re en engineers, look, just because you had applied, that's the first step. Now you know the name of the company. It's Thornton Tomasetti, and you're interested in the office in San Francisco, just go on LinkedIn, go on their website and do a little search and just say, Thornton Tomasetti, New York or San Francisco. And all of a sudden you realize, oh, they've got 25 people there. Okay, that's a good start. You could send a connection request to all 25, or you could look through and say, oh, you know, branch manager. Well, that may be the guy. Send him a connection request. Or if you feel particularly frisky, just pick up the phone and look up the phone number of Thornton Tomasetti and, and say, hi, my name's Joe. I'm looking for a job. You don't say, do you have a job? You just say, hey, I saw that you have a job posting. I applied for the role. Do you know someone I should talk to? Now, stay away from HR, because HR is going to go, you know, they're, they're going to say, oh, you got to go through us. And I just tell, I tell the people that are working, never let anybody tell you no. Doesn't have the power to say yes. <laughs> so recruiters, recruiters and HR people, they don't have to say, they don't have the power to say, yes, you're hired. Yeah. You're going to be the guy that's doing the design or the president of the company. If it's a smaller firm, it'll be the owner of a firm. Or it's going to be that branch manager or a team of three or four people. It's not going to be that little recruiter. So they're just screening out all of the, what we, you know, some people would refer to, they're not trash candidates, just people that, you know, they're, you know, they're not a structural engineer. We're a structural engineering firm. We don't want to talk to them. So they put those people on the sideline, but there's a few and you may not be the perfect fit for the senior role, but let me tell you, there's probably going to be two or three junior roles under that person. Well, it's not advertised. Well, that just means they haven't paid for it. Does that mean there's not roles open? Yeah. So you just call them up and say, I'm an entry level engineer. I've, I love Thornton Tomasetti. I'm so excited you're here in town. I submitted a, a, a resume. I may not be the right fit, but do you know anybody else I should talk to? It takes the pressure off of them. It makes you feel like, well, they're on the phone. Well, tell me about yourself. Boom, the interview just started. <laughs> you say, oh, I got my, graduate, I got my bachelor's question. degree in structural engineering from UC Irvine. I'm moving to San Francisco. I'd love to talk to you about an opportunity. Well, that, hey, let's have a conversation. You just never know. But yeah. those kinds of conversations lead to, oh, you know, Thornton Thomas said he's cutting people loose or they're hiring people. I don't know. Uh, you just never know. Yeah. So having those conversations, you learn about firms and where they are at this particular time. Yeah. Does that make sense? Totally. I truly appreciate your honesty in this whole thing. <laughs> it definitely <laughs> helps us engineers oh. who are still looking, uh, who maybe still looking for uh, job opportunities. You know, now, it's not easy to get found, you know, Mm -hmm. to find jobs and to and to put yourself out there it's then there's a whole network obviously of people yeah. trying to put people together and uh it's it's quite a challenge it's not getting easier so yeah totally um, and you know one of the worst things wilson and you probably experienced this is when you graduated mm -hmm. for four years you go and you blood sweat and tears to get that degree you come out and all of a sudden, every day that goes by, your self-esteem kind of goes a little lower, like Man, nobody wants to hire me. Maybe I need to go to grad school and drop another $30,000. And how come nobody wants to talk to me? And we slowly but surely, this, this, this feeling gets on top of your head. I'm a loser. And you go, no, you're not a loser. You're not a loser. You may not be a great job seeker, but you're probably a perfectly wonderful entry level engineer. Just, you don't know how to talk to people or how to connect with them. Yeah, and totally. Just, I, just real short. I have one young lady who graduated in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, entry level civil engineer. And she called me up and said, Pat, I need coaching. I was like, what's going on? She's like, I graduated from this little small school in Pennsylvania. Nobody's ever heard of us. And 
I'm in Philly and I'm not getting any offers. I was like, how many people have you talked to? She goes, I haven't talked to anybody in a couple of months. I was like, there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and so I gotta I, talk to people. <laughs> you gotta talk to them. You know, networking yeah. is a contact sport. You know, you gotta connect with people and bump yeah. into them a little bit. And even from the word networking, dude, it takes work. It to takes pick work. Up a call. <laughs> It's work to figure out who to talk to and how to present yourself. It does take work. Yeah. She had been out of a job. She hadn't landed her first job and she was so discouraged. You could just hear it in her voice. And I said, stop right there. You're a hundred times better of an engineer than you are a job searcher. There's nothing wrong with that. Let me give yeah. you a couple of tips. And I just talked, walked her through, talked her through the process. Three weeks later, she calls me up because I got a job interview. And I was like, great. You know, you know, not even three weeks. It was like two weeks later. She, I got a job interview. I was like, great. I said, you know, look sharp, show up on time, be energetic. Of course she was. Yeah. And she, I got a job offer. I was like, well, how long did they give you? And I said, was it the dream job? She goes, well, it's a good offer, but nah. and I was like, do you know what you're doing? She's like, yeah. I said, go get three more offers. And she was like, what? I said, yeah, you you don't have to give them an answer for two weeks. Go get three more offers. She's like, yeah. Oh. She didn't know that you couldn't get three more. Dude, she went out and got three more. <laughs> so Those she went two weeks. zero interviews in nine months to four offers in one month. And, wow. and she, you know, star pupil for sure. You know, golden bombs going off and everything. And she landed her perfect dream job. She was thrilled. I was thrilled for, her. and uh, and all she did was just spruce up your LinkedIn profile, figure out who you want to talk to, connect with them on LinkedIn, figure out who they are on LinkedIn, and then just pick up the phone and call them. Yeah, That's and easy. and nobody gets mad when you call them uh, unless you know. Okay, twenty percent of the people in the world will bend over backwards to help you. Twenty percent of the people say, "Leave me alone. I don't want to have anything." To do but most of the people are kind of in the middle like oh you need a favor oh uh, what's up oh you need a new job um, yeah i don't know anybody but connect with me let me stay in touch i might think of someone okay you know so That's all of that to say is have a great linkedin profile and when you connect with someone just consider the virtual handshake call them up and talk to them introduce yourself yeah so that, that's the way to do it. I and once you it. develop that relationship, or even if you have a phone conversation, you just say, hey, can I take you out to lunch or take you to coffee or whatever, you know? And, you're yeah. not, and you just develop those relationships. And you, Wilson, you've been in the business long enough. Um, there's friendships from college or your first boss that you had, you know, and and here's the other thing I just encourage engineers to do is you're not just working for this paycheck. You know, you work this week, you get a paycheck next week. You're working this week for that paycheck next week, but you're also building a reputation of being a good engineer or an honest person or genuine for the next 25, 30 years of your career. A good name is worth more than great, worth more than silver and gold. So be very careful and don't ever burn bridges. Always be a professional engineer, yeah. show up, work hard, be honest and develop your reputation over years. The first job I had as a recruiter was literally, and it's kind of frustrating. <laughs> you're like, dude, you're old. <laughs> was literally Wilson from my boss 25 years ago. And I called him up and I said, Bob, I'm going to be a recruiter. He's like, really? You're going to be good at that. And I was like, well, thanks. He goes, matter of fact, I need somebody. I was like, what do you need? He goes, I need a forensic structural engineer. I was like, what is that? You know, and then you realize there's a whole industry about when things go wrong in engineering and uh, when buildings fall down, and there's a whole industry. And, and I landed my first job as a recruiter with my boss who I had developed a relationship 25 years before. And, you know, we both stayed connected throughout the years. When I needed a job, I called him up and he put me to work. So wow. 
those relationships are really important. And I just encourage you always foster new relationships, connect with people inside your company. You're not trying to get a job, but you want to be connected with them because they may switch jobs and you may switch jobs. And five years later, you might want to call them up and say, hey, there's a project. Do you want a team or do you have an opportunity? I might like to come work for you or maybe you might want to come work with me in my firm. So it's all about networking. It's fostering the, and building those relationships that last over the years where engineers, I think, it used to be we would just have a, a resume, work hard, which is good, and maybe go to a you know a ASCE meeting or a Structural Engineering Institute meeting. Those are good as well, for sure. There's a great, but just having a LinkedIn profile makes it where you can at least be, you can keep up with people, right? Yeah, totally. I I appreciate all the the wisdom that you're sharing here <laughs> it's for job searching, networking, you moms, baby, with personal Robert branding. <laughs> no, th this is good stuff. This is really good stuff. Um, now I I wanted to ask you if you had any books recommendations or podcasts or videos or resources in general that young professionals, young engineers specifically, uh, can look into and at least learn to get started. Because I, when I was in school, I knew nothing. <laughs> so there's always a starting point about, you know, learning yeah. about LinkedIn, personal branding. Do you have any of those resources well, that you recommend? I, you know, I'd say if you want to connect with me, it's Pat at DIY, do it mm -hmm. yourself, DIY engineering job search. So EJS.com. Okay. And uh, that's my website and it's, and uh, so you can go to that website. There's some uh, courses you can take a look at. We're still trying to get it off the ground, but, um, but yeah, you connect with me there or you can connect with me, Pat Batchelor uh, on LinkedIn uh, and that's B-A-T-C-H-E-L-O-R at LinkedIn. And I'm a recruiter there and you can connect with me that way. So would love to help you in any way I can. But there's tons of videos out there. The problem with with it is, is I try to take all of that information and condense it down, boil yeah. it down to where you go. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Straightforward. Let's repeat. And you're going to, and I just tell people, look, in reality, you only need about 500 people of the right kind of people in your network that you need to stay connected with or to connect with. And if you do that, you're going to kind of, you may not unemploy proof yourself, but you're going to be able to reach out to those people at a moment notice to find a job. If for some reason, heaven forbid, you get cut loose. And so we just teach people, hey, just start connecting. I was on the phone last night with a young lady. She just graduated with computer engineering degree here in Atlanta. Uh, she had six connections. <laughs> I said, wow, do something with your LinkedIn profile. She did in two weeks. She has a hundred people she's connected with. And I was like, oh yeah, there's a, a really neat software firm right here in town. And I, you know, and she said she connected with the owner and she's reaching out to him today, making phone calls and sending emails. And it was like, you know, this young lady is going to find a job. And, uh, just so excited for her. I know she's on the right track uh, because she's talking to the people. She wants to have conversations because, you know, when you move town, when you switch towns, you know, you go, I have zero relationships in that new city. How do you start it? Well, go on LinkedIn and start connecting and building that network in that new city. So it can happen at any point in your career. You go, oh, I need to create a new network. How are you going to do it? Use LinkedIn. So, yeah, to totally. LinkedIn is the theme here. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that, that you're being this honest and sharing all these uh, wisdom, ideas, tricks, tips. And uh, obviously people can get more out of you by contacting you. I'll make sure to link down uh, yeah. below to your sites. Uh, so if let's say people want to work with you or perhaps want to <laughs> want to find an opportunity, want to talk to a recruiter, you are that recruiter. People can I just am, contact absolutely. you and, uh, yep. you know, you, you'll take it from there. Uh, you know, yeah. And the other thing with recruiters is they think, you know, there's, there's so many recruiters out there and you really want to find two or three recruiters that work in your niche. Um, okay. And that's, you want to have a good connection with those people 
Because if someone reached at me, computer engineer, I go, I got nothing for you. I don't know anybody in that market. I don't even know what, you know, HTM means, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, C++. I don't know what that is. So I don't recruit in that sector, but I can tell you how to find those people. And, okay. uh, and so that's, that's what it's about is yeah. finding the people you want to have relationships with. And, uh, yeah. Take it from there. Awesome. Uh, well, any any final advice, any final call to action? Dude, update, your LinkedIn profile. update your LinkedIn profile and be a professional. <laughs> Just being a professional is really important. Yeah. You know, you know, they talk about this, you know, wave of, you know, of quiet quitting and slowing down. I'm just like, man, that is one. Sh that's one bad attitude. <laughs> why are you why are you trying to do the absolute least to get the most money? And you're just yeah. going, well, they don't care about me. It's like it's not about you. You know, it's not. You get to decide what what kind of attitude you want to bring to the table. You get to decide if you're going to be a professional, if you're going to solve other people's problems or you're going to be all about you. You get to decide. Yeah. And so I just say, be a professional. And if you're an engineer, be a professional engineer. Whether you have the, the, the you know, pass the exam and get your PE or not, be a pro, be a professional. Absolutely. Every day. Awesome. That, that's wonderful uh, advice right there. Pat, thank you so much for joining the New Traxxas Club and coming to talk about, tell us all these stories or these anecdotes about uh, engineers struggling to find a job search because I, I have struggled myself and I, yeah, I learned a lot. Uh, I'll make sure to put your info down below uh, in the description to, so people can contact you and email you. I truly appreciate your time today and I wish you the best of luck this new 2023. Thank you for watching the Nutra Access Club. Don't forget to subscribe for other similar content. Hit the like button and leave a comment down below with any questions that you may have for this interview. Thank you for your support. See you next time.